paper tuning, bought back tuning, bear shaft tuning, French tuning. Man, I don't know where to start. There's, there's, there's so many. Guys, don't be that archer. <laughs> I get it. It can be confusing. There's a lot of different methods out there. There's a lot of choices you have to make. But when you know which ones to choose, you can narrow it down. It's so less frustrating and you're going to have so much better results for you individually. So that's what we're going to talk about in the video today. I'm going to go over all the different tuning methods, give you an idea uh, on choosing the right ones for you based on you personally. And then also based on the elements and what you have to deal with on that time frame that you're doing your tuning. So we're going to go through that, take a walk with me, we'll go out to my target, and then we'll look at everything and start going from there. Alright guys, let's start out, let's have a little heart to heart. It's okay, no one can hear. It's just us, in a computer screen, or a phone screen. I can't hear you, well, but you can hear me I guess. <laughs> Alright, so let's be realistic. How good of an archer are you? Are you an archer that can do this every time? Can you put them in the tin ring? Can you do it with or without fletchings? Does it matter? No, not really. It's personal preference, but it matters on how you want to do your tuning process. So if you're not an archer that can consistently have good form, if you're not an archer that can consistently group their arrows and have decent scores, you're not going to want to do an advanced tuning method at 30, 40, 50, 60 yards with a bear shaft. You're just not. You're going to drive yourself batty. It's going to create more problems for you you're going to have issues with grip, you're going to have issues with your hits on target, and you're going to be one of those archers that you see constantly on archery talk, myself included at times, that have said, my walk back tuning is great, but my bear shaft hits left or right. What do I do? Well, the answer is, it's work on yourself. You know, fletchings on an arrow provide a lot of correction, which is good. Uh, that's why we have them. It makes it more forgiving. And yes, we shoot with those, you know, we shoot an arrow with fletching. So, you know, you hear the argument, why bear shaft tune? Well, for someone that has repeatable form and good form and good grip and not torque, not any issues, it's a good way to get a bow tuned where you have a clean arrow coming out of that bow every single time and you're going to have good results. So that's why you bear shaft tune. And you bear shaft tune for forgiveness, for you know that arrow coming out of the bow that doesn't need as much correction or any correction. You know that, That's the benefit of it. But if you're an archer that you know has inconsistent grip, has torque, has issues with chasing a bear shaft all day long, but you have good walk back, you probably don't want to do that. So that's where I get with the realistic part of it. And more in depth on this, you know, you, you want to look at it just as a holistic view. Uh, there's lots of different tuning methods for a reason. Everybody's come up with their favorite tuning method, their new tuning method, because it worked best for them. And everyone's different. So find out what works best for you. Just because Archer A says you have to bear shaft doesn't mean that Archer C can't. So which one are you? And it's okay. Be honest with yourself. No one else has to know. All you need to do just have good results down on the target. That's all that matters. And have fun. Enjoy the sport. Unless you're doing it for a living and making money out of it to support your family, there's no reason to not have fun. Yeah, we all get frustrated, me included. But keep it to a minimum. Now my uh, bow tuning 
DVD in, in video that I have on Vimeo, I go way more into depth on all the tuning procedures and which ones to use, um, why to use it for maybe for a certain archer, and then also on the conditions that you have. Um, not, you might can hear, you might can see, I've got my paper tuning rack out here, and it's moving around some. We don't have too bad of a breeze today, but if it's really windy, and I don't have any other options but to tune on that day when it's windy, I'm going to do a different tuning method than I normally would because it matters. It matters based off the time frame that you have and what you're going through. You know, if it's not windy like this and I can do, you know, my bear chef through paper, maybe indoors, and then work myself to outside, get things going at 20, get things at 30. I don't really go back further than that. I explain why in the video. That's a great method, you know, do that. But if it's windy, if it's a bad day, then maybe you want to do a French tuning method because you don't have as much space that you want to work with because the further away you get, the more effect you have on that arrow with the wind. It's a great tuning method to do to dial in your sights on the horizontal line and then to work on your arrow rest to get your best patterns that you're going to have running down the center of the target. So you want to look at all that as well. Um, you know, just group tuning, bear shaft tuning, you know, French tuning, American tuning. Yeah, I don't know if there is one or not, but if there was... Um, you know, it'd probably be a lazy method. Let, let's get real. That's a stereotype for America, right? Lazy, sit down, eating our cheeseburgers, letting the bow do the work for us. I'd like that tuning method. I figure that one out myself. If I can do that, I can perfect it. I can make a lot of money off that probably. Um, but you know, it's just looking at the methods that you have. You want to be able to pick the best ones for you. Um, I'm going to put uh, links down below uh, where you can find my Vimeo video and then also where you can find my uh, DVD. That way, if you do want to check out the bow tuning uh, video that I have, it's about an hour and 20 minutes long. I go through um, bear shaft, um, walk back, French tuning, um, group tuning, uh, everything. Everything from start to finish. From setting an arrow rest, if you use a blade rest, which one to use for your arrow weight setup for your bow, and then also not just going by the numbers on that because you may need to change and I talk about that as well. I'm also going to talk about you know going over um, when to use each tuning method like I said and, and just all that you know holistically and all that together so that way that you know really what you're going to do to have a game plan when you go out there you can base it on your time frame your skill level and what you want to accomplish with that bow so I'll put all that down in the link below um, you know if you have any questions send me an email I'll put my email address down there as well I hope you enjoyed the video today um, you know not too much information in it um, but something that I wanted to be able to go over just to help you maybe if you're being frustrated or if you're, you know, having a bad time with it, don't frustrate yourself. The end all be all for what one person says may not be for you. So just keep that in mind. Uh, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Hit subscribe down below for me. I'm going to do some more videos going forward, like I said, in my vlog one video um, where I'm just going to have some fun videos. I'm actually going to do one this week. Um, got this bow tuned up it's ready to go I'm gonna reward myself with a little bit of a play time I guess as you would call it not just uh, not such serious shooting so I'm gonna enjoy that make some cool shots I'll video some of that for you be able to show that as well later on this week all right Bo. see this here arrow I need you to make this a perfect bullet hole just like that in paper perfect groups on target you got it all right let me get you loaded up here Get after it. I'm going to go have a beer.